Hello, this is Tyler Disney, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the difference between type and instance parameters. So to help me demonstrate, I have here uh, a magic box family, which has type parameters, and I have a magic clearance zone family, which has instance type parameters. So clicking here on the instance type parameter box, the magic clearance, um, all of the parameters here that you can see in the properties window, these are all gonna be instance parameters. What that means is that these parameters are unique for every single instance of this family, regardless of type. So I can change the clearances here and they're all going to change. Um, and if you'll notice that this family has little uh, drag handles on it, I can also use these to change the, uh, the, the dimensions. Contrast that with the magic box, which has type parameters uh, you can't there are no parameters in here uh, to change the dimension of it to do that you have to go into edit type and here are the uh, parameters so I'm just going to do that make it a two foot cube now uh, with this family if I wanted a two foot cube I just come here I say two foot cube and if I wanted a uh, I can make another one. That's another two foot cube. I can make this one a four foot cube. But with this one, if I copy the type and I come in here to the edit, uh, to the type parameters and change this, these to four foot say, now these are both four foot cubes. That's because these are the same type and it is type parameters that drive the dimensions so okay let's say i wanted a two foot cube and a four foot cube over here how would i do that okay first you have to go into edit type you rename the type and we're going to call it two foot cube and change these to two foot and hit okay and then we want this one to be a four foot cube so we come over here to edit type and we duplicate the type that's what that button does call it four foot cube Hit OK, and then we can update our parameters there. And this is now a four foot cube. Now it can be helpful to look over in the project browser under families, mechanical equipment, magic box. You see that there are two types and you can also add more cubes just by clicking and dragging straight from here if you wanted. I think that nicely demonstrates sort of the difference between type and instance parameters. Now to get a little bit more practical, let's try to represent a, a piece of equipment, an actual piece of equipment. So let's say that I want uh, to place condensing units on the roof of this school. I'm using the out of the box Autodesk sort of default project here. So let's take one of these, I'm gonna paste it over here and I'm gonna come to the edit type. I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna call it um, CU-L42. Let's say that I've got a cut sheet in front of me and the model number for this condensing unit is L42. Okay, and we're gonna change this to the equipment depth. That's uh, 18 inches. The height is three feet and the width is also three foot. And uh, I'm gonna say that there's a front and a right clearance to this. And I want those dimensions to be, let's see, front clearance. Uh, let's also make that 18 inches. And then the right clearance, I'm gonna make that, I'm just gonna make that six inches. And the other type parameter that I'm going to fill out is the type mark. And that is what's going to feed my tag. So hit OK on that. And all right, I have my condensing unit, my L42. And I can even tag it. So I'm going to hit TG tag. And so my tag reads the type mark and the mark parameter. So that type mark we just filled out, that's um, CU. The 12 comes from the mark, which is an instance parameter. Uh, not all your tags won't necessarily reflect this, uh, but probably it's a very common naming. So uh, I could place these families all on this roof. And let's say that I've got, let's say that I've got a six pack over here. So I'm going to copy that. I'm gonna snug them up a bit. And then I'm going to uh, 
make a six pack okay we're going to use the dm tool the um, draw axis mirror tool to make a six pack and so we've got that six pack and we've also got a six pack over here let's say okay so that's neat and we can also come through here and tag these and you know this is kind of a nice thing revit does it's clever uh, if this is if you set this type mark to one and then you make multiple copies it automatically increments the mark um, and that seems fine to me so i kind of like that now um, let's say that having just defined this i realize i look at my cut sheet again i realize that i've made a mistake with the dimensions uh, i got the width wrong i come in here i've got edit type and i see that i put in equipment width three foot it's not it's actually two foot ten inches and i want that to be correct so i can come in here and change this in the type parameters and it's going to affect all of these so let's spot check one just one of these random other condensing units and there it is two foot ten inches so that just saved me a whole bunch of time if these were all instance parameters um, i would have had to go through each and every single one and update the dimensions so uh, this is really this is really neat uh, uh, sort of labor saving and organization of information now the other thing i can do here is let's say i've got another type of condensing unit on the roof a bigger one uh, this one's going to be in uh, let's uh, duplicate that and we're going to call this cu uh, l65 and I'm, i've got another cut sheet for this one uh, the depth is the same it's maybe a little taller um, and it's a bit wider it's uh, three and a half feet wide and the type mark it's also CU because that's per my conventions uh, you see this error a lot it basically never means anything interesting you can ignore it okay so I've got my larger uh, condensing unit here and let's say uh, that I, I go back to my design I update my design and I realize that I want all of these to be uh, LU60 or L65 condensing units, not L42s. Well, this is pretty easy. I can just select all of these. I have more than just those selected. So if I have all of my condensing units selected, I can just drop down, select these L65s, and boom, there you go. I go in here and make sure that they're not uh, running into each other since they grew a little bit. And so having these these different types defined makes it really easy to uh, to place my components and then to go through later and nudge and update them um, as necessary. Now, how would we use uh, an instance parameter? How could this be useful? Well, so this one's a clearance zone and it's an instance uh, family for a reason. So let's say we just wanted to use it to kind of stake out our territory on the roof because we've modeled, you know, this air handler and duct system, but we haven't really given any, any indication of how much clearance we need around this. Well, we can use this family really quickly to just drag it around to indicate how much space we need that other trade should sort of stay out of our way here uh, that we, you know, we, we can use it to represent um, walkways and, and things of that nature. And then we can quickly come around and and stake out space for the rest of our equipment because you know other trades might see your roof and they might think oh we could put stuff up there uh, but little do they know that um, the roof is actually domain of the mechanical engineers and all the all other you know trades should really stay out of the way so but they don't always understand this so sometimes we have to be um, explicit and aggressive in defending our own turf and uh, instance-based magic clearance boxes can be uh, quite useful for that. These a little taller. Nice. So having done that, that's nice because these are all unique. I just wanted to get them set to, you know, stretch them quickly based on my, my sort of judgment. And I didn't need to mess around with types because these are all sort of one-off um, one off needs. Now, one danger with using instance type dimension families like this is that it, it is easy if you or someone else who's in the model, you could come along and you could accidentally click one of these drag handles and move it 
you know, you're trying to do something else, but you just accidentally move it. And then, oh, you don't remember quite where it was and you kind of guess and, and maybe that's wrong. So one thing that you can do to keep your instance families from wandering off on you or morphing unintentionally is to pin them, which that's up here in the, there's a button for it, but the hotkey is PN. You can just hit PN to pin it. And then with it pinned, it's not possible to move it. So that just protects your equipment from unintentional moves. So that was just a quick tour of the difference between type and instance parameters and how you might think about using them most productively in your design process. I hope that was useful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment. My job here is to help you kick more ass at Revit. Any way I can do that, I'm happy to help.